down here at the Greater Flamingo exhibit, which is part of our African belt. It's one of the best kept secrets at the zoo. And we're here with Dan Burns, who's one of the keepers in our bird program. And Dan, yes. what a fantastic time of year, because I see little teeny babies. They almost look like a gray, fuzzy tennis ball. Yeah, we actually have three greater flamingo chicks down here right now. We've got one that's about three days old, yeah. and one way in the back that just hatched this morning. That is incredible. He was literally an egg this morning. A number of these sit on these funny mounds. Now, yeah. if they're not nesting, it might look like a big muddy mess, but actually it looks like hog heaven right now. It, we actually have a soaker hose that we keep under there because okay. they like it muddy, and then we make sure we put just the right kind of dirt in there yeah. to make sure they, you can actually see them nest building right now. They reach out with their bill yeah. and use it like a backhoe and just pick up little pieces of dirt, bring yeah. it up, and build yeah, them I out. Yeah, right there. That is crazy. We clearly have a big flock. I don't even know if we can count all these. This one looks like about 30 or 40. Yeah, we have, I think, about 37 in here. That is great. Now, so, they breed. We've got these babies. Long term, I mean, you can't grow to be 300. Do, do zoos trade them back and forth? We do. We actually have 12 of them that are up at the giraffe exhibit right now okay. that are going to be going to Miller Park later this year because okay. we've had so much breeding success in the last couple of years that we need to make some more room. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a neat thing. They're a popular bird, so tell us some more about identifying them. Some of them seem pinker than others, some seem a little gray. What does that mean? The four guys we have in here that are the same size as everybody else but gray are actually last year's juveniles. Oh, okay. They have lived in this exhibit their entire lives. This time last year, they were a little gray fuzzball on the mound. They've been oh, okay. completely parent-raised. We've only had hands on them a couple times. And okay. that's the plan for our new guys. We've got three chicks on the ground now and yeah. eight more eggs that should be hatching in about the next two weeks. You know what's funny? When you really take a minute to look closely at them, you start to see those differences. Like you just said, these adults don't just have bright pink wing feathers, but their bill is pink, their yep. legs are pink which I assume is a way of showing off for a mate because the juveniles are still gray-legged yeah. and, and not very pink on the bill. Yeah, as you can see, the chicks hatch gray. All these birds would be gray if we didn't actually give them a pigment to make them pink. Okay, so how's that work in the wild? It, they would eat food that had the pigment in it. Okay, like red you know, algae and some small and shrimp. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 yeah, clearly they are a terrific animal and they're doing great with this mud. I didn't realize you provide sort of a water source to make sure it yep. stays mud. That's yeah, perfect. it's got to stay muddy yeah. and we keep adding material through the nest season so they can build the bounds as high as they want. Yeah, that's great, absolutely great. Next time you come to the zoo, make sure you sneak down behind the African belt and take a look at the greater flamingos and their chicks.